Hi again then guys and welcome to another speed build obviously for Forza Horizon 4 and this time it's for a vehicle that you can unlock via uh, Fortune Island I think it's called yeah that's the name <laughs> and it's the Celine S5S Raptor concept personally I've never liked this one as much as the S7 I don't know many people who do prefer this over the S7 though but it would have been a cool rival to the Audi R8, and it would have been a rival quite a long time ago as well. It's a great mid-level supercar in that kind of sense, but the performance is definitely not mid-level, because if you tune this thing up, it's rapid. Very, very rapid. Now, you've got a couple of engine options that you can work with. You've got, for instance, the Viper V10. I've gone for the Racing V12, so it depends what you want. The V12 gives you the best numbers. And as far as the performance, as I said, it's rapid. Even with racing tyres rather than drag tyres, it still hits 60 in under 2 seconds, 104, flat out 268, at least according to the benchmark. Now, of course, we'll test it in a second to see what it, it can actually do. But as far as the upgrades themselves, you want to fit all of your racing parts, including the transmission, the diff, the brakes, the tyres, except for the front and rear wing. You don't need those. You can fit them if you want to, but they're not necessary, and they do hinder top-end speed. And I would recommend all-wheel drive as well. And of course, as far as power, take it as high as you can go, take the weight as low as you can go. Now, as far as the gearbox, I'd recommend a final drive of 4.3. Then for the individual gears, 2.9, 2, 1.5, 2, 1 1.18, 0.96, and 0.78. Then neutral camber and tow, in particular that is for all-wheel drive, with 4 degrees of caster. As far as anti-roll, I've got those on 30 and 25, springs on 115, 160, and I've lowered, as you can see, the front. A lot more than the back, but that just levels it out, basically, because it's naturally lower at the back. And personally, I'm just not a fan of cars that are like that. As far as the dampers, we've got those on 10, 14, 5, and 6. Aero, of course, doesn't apply, as I said. And for the diff, I've got 100% on the acceleration side of things, 0 for the decel, and a 70% split. Now, if you want it to be a little bit more nimble and a little bit more tail-happy, you could take that up to, say, 75% or even 80 but I'd recommend making full use of the all-wheel drive and not going too far to the back. But that's it for the tune itself. It is on my storefront, so you can use the keywords in the description below to find that. Or, of course, you could do it yourself via this method. But now what you want to see is how quick can it actually go. Now, regardless of my personal opinion of the S5S, it was a car that I think was ahead of its time. It would have been a fantastic rival to the newer R8s, even the new shape NSX, before, in fact, way before they even came out. And as far as performance in the game goes, it doesn't let you down. It used to be extremely quick in Forza 4, and even coming back now, it's really quick again. Now, as far as its actual performance goes, you can get it up to 268 pretty comfortably, but you will probably notice in the video that the top-end acceleration, especially above 260, is suddenly a little bit more sluggish than the rest of it. So that is something that you need to bear in mind. It's a little bit slower than some other supercars and hypercars, but of course the length of the final gear also affects that as well. So if you want to change that up, maybe make the gears a little bit closer without sacrificing the speed, then of course you could try that, but it's all down to you. So if you decide to use this tune or get it from my storefront, I hope either way you have a ton of fun with it. And of course, click right here on screen to see tons of my other tunes for Horizon as well. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.